Hi, Lisa DeHart here. And today I want to talk about something that's sort of near and dear to my heart lately. I don't know. I just published recently my new book, Light Up, The Science of Coaching with Metaphors. And so metaphors are really on my mind. And I'd like to talk about some element of agreement setting and metaphors and how they really support a coach in starting to figure out directionality. So let's get into it. One of the things that often happens in coaching conversations, and I talk about the container of a coaching conversation quite a lot on this channel, and I think it's really important because it is really, in my mind, one of the things that separates coaching from therapy or consulting or insert any other way, modality of teaching, consulting, counseling, whatever, mentoring, even supervision, is this sense of the client is at choice for direction of the conversation. And one of the ways that I really see metaphors as being powerful is one, for many coaches, what we've learned in coaching school is metaphors are really great. And when you're looking at the competency around evoking awareness, it even says within the ICF competencies that the coach will use things like analogy or metaphor to help support the client's insight and awareness. And yet what I see happen a lot is that coaches are bringing the metaphor. And in fact, when people sign up for my course on metaphors, the power of coaching with the power of metaphors, what I hear from people is I'm looking for more ways to be better able to explain to my clients things through the lens and language of metaphors. And I'm kind of like a heart stop on that because it's not that there's anything wrong with a coach bringing the metaphor forward with the client. But the problem is for many clients, they've actually already brought the metaphor forward themselves. And it becomes an element of how are we partnering with our clients? So rolling back to agreement setting, when we're looking at setting an agreement with our clients, what we're really looking to do is one, find out what it is that they'd like to have a conversation about. Obviously, yes, we need to know that. But we're also partnering and reconfirming and checking in with a client about what's important about this topic that they're bringing forward and what a success measure might be. Now, these first three elements of agreement setting really have to do with what would you like to talk about today in our coaching conversation? What's showing up? What is it that is important for us to noodle over today? It could happen in a multitude of ways that a coach is inviting the client to share what's important to them. The client then says something, whatever the client says. I just was listening to a coaching conversation yesterday and the client was talking about having this sort of swirling mind and feeling very much like their mind was swirling everywhere. And when they were talking about this swirl, the coach had an opportunity to notice the swirl that was showing up for the client. So the coach actually did. I'm hearing you talk about swirl. Now, here's where we get into what would be an important directionality to be heading in the conversation. If we were to really explore what needs to be explored around the swirl, what would be different at the end of this conversation for you? So the movement from swirl towards something else, maybe it's peace, maybe it's ease, maybe it's steps to take, maybe it's confidence. I don't know. It could be anything that the client wants to have, right? And so in this way, what we're starting to do is create this container of the agreement, but also the coaching container of this conversation. And so we're going from this kind of swirl towards, let's just call it ease for the sake of this conversation. We're moving from swirl to ease. This gives us the parameters, sort of like if you've ever done any sort of bowling with kids, maybe you've had the little bumper bowling so that the ball doesn't just do a gutter ball each time. It gives the parameters for the ball going down the lane. 
metaphors allow us to do the same thing. We have a sense of moving from swirl towards ease, and we can ask other questions to really reconfirm this. So if I'm hearing you correctly, then what would be important in this conversation is to really explore what's between the swirl that would allow you to have more ease. Client says, yes, that's what I'm saying. Excellent. Here comes where we're looking now at 3.4 in agreement setting, where the coach works with the client in order to determine what's important from the client's perspective about what they need to explore in order to get where they want to go. So if we were moving from swirl towards ease, where would you like to begin this exploration towards ease? And in this way, we're doing some directionality. I also want to say that maybe we ask the client something around, what is the experience you have when you're at ease? And the client might say all kinds of things. My shoulders are loose, or I just feel settled. I feel confident. Excellent. These are all great things. What is the experience of confidence? It is this sense of I can stand on my own two feet and I'm grounded in confidence. Wonderful. So from swirl towards ease and grounded confidence. Perfect. Now we can invite the client to share with us what is between swirl and ease and grounded confidence, and the client will start to name the things that are important. Along the way, grounded confidence, which is metaphorical, ease is an, a somatic experience that a person is having. Confidence often is a somatic experience. Grounded is somatic also. So, I mean, not only is it a metaphor, it's also a really well-grounded metaphor in the somatics of the human experience. So we're now working within the constructs of how the mind and body work together. And the metaphor allows us to not name the swirl, anxiety, frustration, fear. We don't have to go into any of those kind of emotions. The client already knows what the swirl means to them. We don't need a definition of it. What we need, though, is that directionality of the direction that we're going to be turning our questions towards. And here's the thing, and I may have said it on another video, but I think it bears being said again. Anytime you ask a question, you are leading your clients. Let me say that again. Anytime you ask a question, you are leading the conversation. And in a coaching conversation, that means your clients. And it's not that we shouldn't be leading our clients. It's where are we leading our clients that coaches have to really start to pay attention to. One of the things that I see is the client starts then talking about this thing, this sort of swirl and how the swirl feels really nebulous and, and uncomfortable and the discomfort is really overwhelming. And the coach will say something, tell me more about that discomfort that you're noticing. That's a direction. That is a choice point that the coach has just made. It's going to take the client in the direction of focusing on the swirl and the discomfort. Now, think about this from the perspective of a creative brain. Is a creative brain going to find a solution to the swirl and discomfort by talking about the swirl and discomfort? Probably not. Not going to say it would never happen. You guys will prove me wrong. But what I am going to say is there's another choice point. The other choice point might sound something like, and I would say there's a hundred other choice points, but I'm just going to pick on one. I'm hearing you talk about the swirl and that sort of discomfort and nebulousness. What about that is important as it supports your movement towards ease and grounded confidence? In this way, again, going back to the, the bumper bowling that I was talking about earlier, the client has the safety of the container to explore the discomfort as it relates to where they want to go. This is crucially important. Oh, I'm not looking at this like, let me explain my discomfort to you and get stuck in the swirl and be like, ah. Oh. It's really much more about the direction towards what it is that I want to be experiencing. In that regard, I can talk about the discomfort is this negative narrative that I have, and maybe I've had it since my childhood, and I really need to explore how I let that go or I change the story. Uh, 
as I might say, craft a story, a new story for this uh, narrative? Um, and, and what might that sound like so that I could be moving towards confidence? We're going to be able to explore all the things that are in the way of the client getting to where they say they want to go so that the client has insights and awarenesses and new things available to them through the exploration and sometimes not even new things. I can tell you many times with my clients, they're like, it's not that I've had a new insight, but I'm understanding it in a new way. And I think I can apply it in a new way as a result of this conversation. That's very, that's a very different thing and super important because Often the information isn't new. It's been rattling around in their brain for a while, but what we're doing is helping them to illuminate it so that they can move from swirl towards ease and grounded confidence. And again, this is the choice point of the directionality. Tell me more about the swirl and the discomfort, or tell me what needs to be explored so that we can move towards grounded, confident ease. These are very different directions that a coach might be leading a client to explore. And when I say leading, I don't mean that the coach is like telling the client, let's start with X because you mentioned it and we should explore it first. That's like obviously really, really blatant leading a client where the coach believes the client needs to go. But Every time I ask you a question, it's going to bring up something in your head. And thus, it is going to very subtly or not so subtly influence the direction that you're thinking or, or pondering or exploring. So for instance, if I say, you know, what do you, you know, what does it look like to feel anxious or what do you notice about the anxiety or the discomfort or the swirl? It's an open-ended question. I'm not telling the client something they should know about themselves. I'm using their language. In many ways, it'll fit the coaching model. And yet it doesn't support the movement forward. And that's a big part of what makes coaching coaching. It's not that we don't talk about those deeper issues, but we talk about it through the safety of directionality. So metaphors really allow us to do this because they give us that 30,000 foot view. We're not talking about your discomfort. We're just calling it swirl and we're moving towards something that you want to be moving towards. So I hope this was a useful video and I look forward to seeing you on another video. If you're interested, the book is available anywhere you might buy a book. And I'll be talking about this in my next monthly Q&A. So that's free. If you would like to join, you're welcome to. Just follow the links below to my website and you can sign up for the free monthly Q&As. And please like, share, give comments and all that jazz and subscribe, I guess, also to the channel. I would really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in another video.